Lucia Fogg cared not a straw for the wonders of Bombay, but gave me a few hours' leisure as he settled to his evening paper. I ended up wheezing and puffing my way up Malabar Hill, the highest point in South Bombay. I poised at the top to look towards the city and looked out at the bay. British airships dominated the skyline, tethered loosely to the gunboats that patrolled the docks. Brightly painted merchant ships darted into the harbour, eager to unload their cargo before the light faded. Catching my breath, I found my steps irresistibly drawn towards uh, the Hanging Gardens, which shielded the Parsi Tower of Silence from the bay. The Hanging Gardens were magnificent. Little steam-powered curricles and horse-drawn carriages vied for space underneath the shady trees. Uh, British officers escorted their stiff, bodiced wives, or made eyes at brightly dressed Indian girls. And in the shadow of the gardens, I saw the symbol of the copper lily on the door of a co converted mansion. I approached the door, and I approached and knocked on the door. I was given a cup of tea and a cushioned wicken chair almost as soon as I crossed the threshold of the outpost of the Artificers Guild. They were a varied group. Most were British or Indian, but I spotted a few Turks and Chinese. More than half were women, and all sat sitting tea together as equals and poring over periodicals. A middle-aged Sikh in a bright blue turban and admir admirably pressed trousers approached me. What is it you require, traveller? I I want to know the fastest way from here. Darampal, the Sikh man, wrinkled his nose. Not the train, he said. The paper says it goes to Calcutta, but the line stops at Al Alhabad. There is no track between there and Calcutta. Ah. The papers lied? They did not check, certainly, so it is with journalists. I thank the artificers profusely before taking my leave, though alas I was so distracted by my musings that I failed to notice two thuggish fellows with ill content accorded me in a side street and demanded my shoes. Uh, These are fine Italian leather, I cried in horror, which was a grave error as that only made them more desirable. Indeed, I returned to my master barefoot and rather shamefaced. I hope this will not happen again, said my master coldly. That was to be the last word on Bombay. Gateway to the jewel in the crown of the British Empire, except for... And what, pray, has happened to your shoes? Right, so... What they've said is actually, if I pay for that, I'll get stuck in Alphabad. Um, so that's the question of, do I take that, or do I try and get this? And negotiate it down? Ooh, I can get this. Okay, yeah, we'll do that. Oh, no, I can't. I can't rearrange. I can't rearrange. So we, we pay nine to get that extra bit. Or we can explore. But if we explore, we lose this route. Uh, that'll, that can get us to Chittagong, which is where we want to go, I think. So we will take this, I think. And we'll pay for the extra. The Madras Mail. The Bombay Express was a fine train, luxurious and opulent. Inside each softly lit compartment, Persian rugs and Venetian lamps threw colour over fittings of teak wood and burnished brass. I only hoped it would run on time. Soft furnishings do not, as my master would say, power an engine. Oh, no, no, converse, converse. Greetings, Monsieur Compton. Can I help you? Have you locked yourself out of the compartment to Kolkata? You mentioned steamships. I've been told I met a man who saw the opening of the paddle boat Ayupa, from Tab Tabatinga to Bel Belem. And then Calcutta to Singapore, is there a straight route? I understand my father always wanted to take the cargo steamer from Lima to Santiago. And then from there, Port Moresby. I think you're out of luck there, Batavia. Quickest way to Batavia from here is through Colombo, right. Yeah, Lima to, this is not useful. This is not useful, I'm not taking this route. That's so out of my way, it's ridiculous. So now we're learning about South America. I'm not going to go to South America. I'm going to try and go to the north of America, because that's probably... So I think we'll probably just go there and go there. Right, so where are you? You are now in Vladivostok. Now, if memory serves, I was arrested there for a few days. Um, yes. Uh, hope, uh, like the, hopefully the officer was right, because otherwise I made the wrong pick. <laughs> Uh, let's go back, shall we? I went to explore uh, the observation decks, set with wicker chairs and parasols to better and more comfortably observe the countryside flashing past. 
and that was there where I met Anne-Marie Spencer, a girl of maybe ten years sketching the distant hills. I greeted her politely as I took the spot beside her. She smiled and with deft movements adjusted the position of a wheeled chair to give me more room, dropping one of her pencils as she moved. I returned it with a bow and she giggled. You must be French, she declared. You are gallant indeed. I admit I flushed and turned my face rapidly away. I knew it, she said. I have a good eye. I see things as they are. That is why I draw. I looked over her pictures to be confronted by their strangeness. I could not recognise anything of the landscape she was so closely watching in the lines and shapes that filled the page. You have a most unusual style, I hedged. Oh, monsieur, she said, I have a good eye. I can see you are lying. Then I do not need to say it, I replied. She nodded. Charming, she replied. I knew it. Just then my attention was distracted as my master beckoned me over to make ready his evening wear. I bid her farewell, and she nodded to me. I will see you again, monsieur Passepartout, she told me as I left her. I did not stop to wonder that day how it was she knew my name. Oh dear. We'll uh, try and keep uh, Fog's health up. We know roughly where we're going, so we don't need to worry too much about this. The next morning I discovered I had lost my passport. I told Monsieur Fogg immediately, risking his displeasure at the possibility of delay. But in truth, I think he was amused. Should I lose my passport too? He replied, I would be most vexed. I decided to enlist the help of Anne-Marie and her excellent eye, so I tracked her down on the observation deck and explained the situation. She looked most concerned. What might happen to you without documents? Um, at worst, I will not be allowed to travel, I replied, and that would be most serious, as my master is on a journey around the world. She nodded. Well then, we shall have to look, won't we? I think you should search the crew cabins which my chair cannot access, and I will look about here. How did she know my name? That, that, uh, it seemed a good plan. So I agreed. As I was heading from the car, I uh, looked back and smiled, thought of one more thing to ask. And only to find Anne-Marie doubled up with laughter, having not moved from the spot. What is going on? She tried to look serious, but then she began to giggle. At first delicately, then more and more uproariously. I rather feared I understood the source of her mirth. Holding out a hand, I demanded the return of my passport. By way of reply, she took my hand and got to her feet. I'm afraid I am a dreadful kleptomaniac, she apologised with a deep insincerity, and dropped a curtsy, and an unparalleled liar to boot, Then she giggled again. And the chair? My arrangement with the train guard. I agreed to stay in the chair and out of the mischief, so they didn't lock me up, but your pocket came so close. My passport, please, I demanded with no small irritation. I've dropped it, she replied with an indifferent shrug somewhere. I am most disappointed, I declare. An open laugh, then Anne-Marie sat down again, suddenly glum. You've stopped being charming, she said morosely. Here's your passport. She reached into a fold of her dress and pulled out my papers. She made as though to flick them out of the window. I stood back, arms folded. determined not to perform for this creature. She sighed and glowered, then tossed the passport at my feet. What sort of name is Passport to anyway? She demanded sulkily. I wiped my brow with relief. A long and most difficult delay had been avoided. Uh, wait, let's see what we get. Fog and Valet making good time so far. I don't have a name. I'm just Valet. I did not see the girl at all today. I think she's been kept within her quarters under some kind of observation. Suitable to her flagrant criminality. No doubt medical in nature. I'd heard of such indispos indispositions before, but clearly this was a remarkable case. I occupied my time. Eavesdropping hoping to find options for our next leg, and I picked up from a cheerful Russian ragamuffin that, notorious jewel thief, that a notorious jewel thief plied the waters between Singapore and Batavia in a boat called the Spicy Jake. So we must be aware of what we have, right? Oh, yep. Yeah. At Madras, they pushed the young lady from the train down a ramp, and she waved up at me before turning to face the road ahead. Under the weight of our cases, I could not wave back, and then she was gone. Who was that girl? My master asked. An unfortunate, I answered. It is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves, he replied, quitting Shakespeare. She would no doubt steal it back from the stars, I grumbled, as we disembarked into the Madras station, if they had the temerity to try. So we want to head to Chittagong, don't we? Oh, the session to be sold here. Oh, we can sell that here? Are we in... is this... this isn't Manila? This is Madras. I'll hold on to that, I think. 
for turmeric in Canton. We'll sell that then. Right, plan. Oh, I can depart to Calcutta. From whence we can head to Singapore. So, that departs in a, few, in a bit of time. Anything else? I think that's a boat, isn't it? Yeah, shipping. I think I will buy that. Uh, I don't think we're heading to Canton. I need to see where that is. When does this depart? Three. So where's Canton? Canton. Canton up there. No, so we're not going to head to there. So there's no point in getting it. Uh, the traveling cloak. I think we'll leave it again. Because it would require us to get another one. There we go. Yes. We need to find a way of dealing with like the sweltering heat and the baking sun. But we seem to be managing without fog being too hor horrifically injured. What was that? It was not until the Western Plough left the shores of India that I truly relaxed. Glad to be on the move once more. Uh, we will wait. Oh, no. I was going to wait. Greetings, Monsieur Chatterjee. Greetings, I'm the ship's navigator. Calcutta to Singapore. I've heard... We live back in with the Dark Queen to New Orleans became popular. Singapore to Brisbane, we can go to Australia. You can buy didgeridoos in Brisbane and they'll sell in Lima. Singapore to Machu Picchu. Okay, not particularly useful. But a route down to New Orleans. Not overly useful. Actually, no, I want to... Okay. Oh, no, right. Where, where was I? I'm still in Vladivostok, and I think I was arrested for a while. <coughs> so yeah, we're now catching up, which is good. We'll see what happens. The water was calm and crystal clear beneath our prow. Um, I took a turn about the ship to familiarise myself with her and the other passengers. The flower was a passenger liner, but one used by the middle classes and business people, travelling the coast and making trades between south and north. Uh, one such was Madame Sumethi, a hard-nosed lady who proclaimed her profession to be weaver, but, by the sound of it, managed a warehouse floor in which several hundred workers did her weaving for her. Uh, you're a good employer, I'm certain, I suggested. She shook her head. I employ no one. We are a cooperative. I'm merely the most experienced in our little collective. Then she smiled a crocodile smile, which left me in no doubt as to her position. Okay, we're going to have to look after Fog. Mr. Monsieur Fog. Try and boost his health up. I know it's not health, but I, that's how I treat it. On the second day, we reached the port of Voltaire. Madame Sumathi disembarked, catching my arm as she stepped from the boat. You're going all the way to Calcutta, are you not? If so, look up my husband there. Tell him he may return any time he chooses. With that, she stepped from the ship. It seems you make friends wherever you go, Monsieur Fogg remarked, remarked to me wryly later that day. <laughs> One difference between myself and Monsieur Basbottu. So we're going to be arrived in Calcutta, and we wait! Terrorist outrage shakes Rome, Zouave blamed. So it must be that must be a long delay between the papers to get here. We made good time up the coast of India, enjoying the rolling of the waves and the glorious thick scents from the kitchens. It seemed it was traditional on board to hold a banquet for lunch on the final day. We enjoyed ourselves thoroughly, and all but rolled down the gangplank to, into Calcutta. Yes, I'm aware. So. Anything we can sell? Ooh, Pacific timetable, that'd be good. I don't think we're going to get much out of that. Tot of rum for... Let's see what we find. Ooh, a route, to, a route from Hong Kong. Where's that going? Is that just going to... Yokohama. And there's one from Yokohama all the way to San Francisco. I think San Francisco is where we want to get to in the end. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no, ooh. Okay. Unless there's one from further south. So that's the route that, uh, that he's on. Right. So we're over there. So Manila would probably be quite useful, but Hong Kong is the only one we currently have access to. Anytime he chooses, mark it. We've already done that. Right, we've already been there. That's what we just found. Um, oh, when when is this? 
So if I try to go all the way to Hong Kong, we can negotiate it to down to tomorrow. So we will. Yeah, but that's going to cost us a lot, isn't it? Singapore may do us more good. And Toy Jewel Thief sails to, to Batavia in a boat called the Spicy Jake, which might... I don't know if that's a good thing or not. Right. We could explore, because it's going to be tomorrow anyway. Calcutta was an industrial city which had built its wealth on opium, textiles and indigo. But that was not to say it was uncultured. Uh, as a Frenchman, of course. Nothing compared to Paris, of course. So I steered clear of places of discussion out of homesickness for my home's bustling cafe. I spent my time locating Madame Sumathi's husband, which we'll, of course, do. Uh, by asking first the local police, then the merchants, and finally in the tea shops, I eventually tracked down a bearded, weary-looking man to whom I relayed the message I had been given. He nodded. Will you see my wife again? Uh, it is extremely unlikely, I answered. My master and I are going around the world. Shame, then, Madame Sumathi's husband replied. So the only way I'll be able to answer my wife is if I go and see her for myself. Well, he put down his teacup with some force and got to his feet. Perhaps it is time I expressed myself. You two are not on good terms. My wife ran, out, ran our marriage the way she runs the factory of hers. Every minor slip is punishable by starvation, eviction, humiliation. In the end, it was simpler for me to simply escape. But one cannot avoid a marriage forever. He made his way to the door, then turned back. You say you're going round the world? That is right. Then maybe you'll be catching the steamer to Singapore and Hong Kong. If they give you any problems, mention my name. I'm sure they'll sell for you then. With that, he slunk away. I returned quickly to Monsieur Falk. Ooh. Can I... I'm going to Singapore, minus 34. Going to Hong Kong is minus 45. You just get a little re little hop long to Chittagong. But getting there will mean that we'd have to probably wait another day. I think... Going to Singapore might give us a few more options. Like, if we can get like a boat up to Manila, we can then go... That might cut off a little bit of our route. So... Hmm... We will rest for a day. We're down to less than 3,000. Which, we spent 1,200 pounds. I attended to Monsieur Falk. Uh, Fighting him with a haircut with the deer wish he would have a restorative night. So, Singapore. <laughs> yeah, not, not brilliant condition-wise, but I think we're alright. The SS Thunder of the Apcar shipping line had, ten years previously, set the record for the fastest journey between Singapore and Hong Kong, and our captain promised us a journey of five days rather than the usual figure of six. Uh, compensate, converse. Greetings, my dear madame. Tell me of Paris, passport two. I'm told Singapore has a bad reputation. Singapore suffers for its location, too close to everywhere. What of Batavia? Surely not, but answer me this. Does the Seine ever flood? Maybe? River flood, this river floods every year where I come from. Uh, Colombo. Here's something I know. Celanese cinnamon is the best in the world. Singapore to... Uh, Antananarivo? They say the Malagasy Queen is an artificer. Perfumed oils. Uh, Singapore. Uh, it's, uh, Brisbane. No idea. I switched Brisbane from here's Batavia, Stone Town. No banks exist in Stone Town. So we learned nothing. Brilliant. 